This is a brief introduction to programming the PyPico microcontroller uh, in C from a Linux platform. So I'm starting off with a fresh Fedora 37 workstation install. And the first thing that we need to do is install some required packages, development packages. Um, and I've, I've already done this, but just for demonstration purposes, um, we need to install git, cmake, and then the C++ compiler. So, of course, I've, I've already installed those. And then there are also some packages that we will need to install for cross-compiling. The workstation is actually an x86-64 platform, and the PyPico is, is an ARM platform. So we need to install the ARM uh, GCC compiler. And again, it's already installed, so we're good there. And we need to install the C++ compiler. And then finally, we will also need to install a library that's going to be required by the PyPico SDK. OK, so with all those installed, um, next thing we need to do is get the actual PyPico SDK. Uh, and I'm just in this embedded directory where I'm going to install or where I'm going to do my builds. Um, so I'm going to use git to clone the library. GitHub.com Raspberry Pi Pico SDK. Okay, and that will download it into our directory. And there it is. Um, but there's an additional step. So we need to load up some of the sub-modules. So we go into the directory and git the module update in it. And this shouldn't take too long. So once the library is installed, initialized, there we go. So we're actually now ready to uh, begin programming. So uh, let's go down one directory. Well, actually, one last thing. Uh, let's, we need to have an environment variable that lets the compiler know where the Pi, the Pico SDK is located. So we need to export, and this is going to be, so it's in my user's home directory, embedded Pico SDK. So the Pico SDK path environment variable needs to be set uh, so that the compiler will be able to find it. Um, so let's go ahead and now make, uh, we're just going to do a simple blink example. So I'm going to make a directory called blink. Go into my, this is where my blink project will be. And first thing I want to do is there's a, um, a CMake file that's included in the Pico SDK that we will need um, for our project. So Pico SDK, so we'll copy that into here. And then we need to uh, create a CMake file in here that we're going to use to uh, create the make file for our project. So make it there, and then we'll go to our editor and blink. And let's go ahead and edit this file and uh, populate it with some settings. I'm actually just going to do a cut and paste here. So we're basically setting up our yeah, minimum requirements and including that um, that CMake file that we just copied into our project directory. You can see it here. Um, Going to provide some fun functions that are needed. Uh, defining our project and the CMake standard we want to use. Initializing the Pico SDK. Uh, then specifying our executables that uh, we're going to create. And I haven't created that yet, but we'll we'll create the Blink-C uh, source code, uh, then the link libraries for our project, 
and then finally this step is needed the output is needed uh, to create the u2f file that we'll use to flash the actual uh, pypico so we can save that we don't need this open so next thing we need is our actual source code blink.c so we'll edit blink.c again just for brevity i'm going to cut and paste and then we'll kind of discuss this a little bit so we're going to include the uh, standard library for the pico um, on the pi pico uh, pin 25 is actually connected to a, a green led on the board so when you get a pi pico you already have something you can use to run some tests write some code so i'm just defining a constant here uh, for pin 25 and this main function is what's going to run when I uh, upload my uh, when I flash the the PyPico with my uh, executable. So in here, first we need to um, initialize the uh, the GPIO GPIO 25, and then we're going to set the direction for output. So because we're going to be driving the LED that's on the board, and then we just create a loop that's going to run forever. And first thing it does is it's going to set the LED pin high, which should turn the LED on. And then it's going to wait 200 milliseconds. It'll then turn the pin off, you know, make the pin go low, which will turn the LED off. And then we'll sleep another uh, two milliseconds. And then it will just cycle again. So we'll see the LED blink off and on. So at this point, yeah, we don't need this. We'll save that, and now we go back to our terminal, and in our Blink directory, so we've got our uh, CMake files and our C source code. So let's make a build directory. Go into our build directory, and here we're going to actually uh, create the make files. So CMake dot dot. That will use the uh, the make files, the settings in the uh, the source directory to create our make files here in the build directory. So we run that, and now we should have in here. Okay, we've got our our make files ready to go, and should just be able to say make, and this will compile our source code, the uh, blink.c and the uh, the Pico SDK as well, and then link everything together to create a uh, executable. There it is, and then along with the you know the binaries executables, it will create this uh, UF2 file that we can uh, copy to the um, PyPico uh, to flash it. So to flash it, what we'll do is there's a, a boot select button on the PyPico, and we just need to press that button and then plug in our USB cable to our workstation. Let go, and we should now. The, the PyPico will boot up from the ROM and be in uh, USB mass storage mode. Um, let me clear this. And so we can see it mounted. Uh, run media, my username, and there it is, RPI, RPI2. So this mass storage location was mounted when I plugged the Pi in, and I can actually copy now my uh, uf2 file that blink uf2 file do that path and that will automatically flash to the pypico and then the pypico will restart so if we say blink uf2 to run media and boom there we go so we should now see uh, the green led we just starting to blink here off and on um, and I think I was saying two milliseconds it's actually two seconds so two seconds on two seconds off and that's really all there is to it um, one thing that might be kind of annoying is if you want to reflash it like if if we change this code to uh, make it so that it just stays on for half a second right and then off for two seconds so it's just going to blink on really fast 
blink on and then back off. Um, is there right? Yeah. So if I build this again, I can say make. Now, in order to get that flashed, I have to unplug the USB cable to power everything off. Hold down the boot select button and plug it back in. Release. So it's mounted again as USB mass storage device. Uh, run media. So, and again, CP link UF2 to the mass storage device. And there we go. So we get a, a quick flash. Now, it, it's kind of annoying that you have to unplug the USB cable every time. However, there's, um, there's a way that we can simplify the process uh, by adding a button so that we can pull the run pin down. So here in this diagram, I, I have the ground from the Pi Pico on a ground rail, and then I have a button over here that is normally open, and then I tie the ground rail to one side of the button, and then the other side of the button is tied to the run pin on the Pi Pico. So whenever I press this button, it will pull the run pin low and reset the Pi Pico. And in this way, um, you can not only reset the Pi Pico, but if you're holding down the boot select, then you can get back to the uh, mass storage mode and upload your files without, um, without having to pull the USB cable. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm, I'm going to actually unplug this one more time. Put a button in here. So we've got a button and let's tie pin three here to ground to our ground rail. need to tie a run button to the other side or the run pin to the other side of our button. Okay, so we now have basically that circuit that I was just showing. So we now have pin 3 from the Pi Pico tied to our ground rail. And then the ground rail is also tied to one side of a normally open button. The other side of the button is then tied into the run pin. So now when we so I plug this in again, of course once we plug it in our program will start to run with our, our fast blink but if I hold down the run button and the boot select then release the run button and release boot select and we're back into the ROM mode so that makes it so that you can do rapid uh, iterations so if I was going to change my program let's make it so it blinks off and on rapidly instead of just the um, on rapidly. So if I save that, do make, and so I'm, I'm already in the USB mass storage mode. So I think you have to run media. And like that, there we go. We're blinking. So now, again, for fast iteration, assuming I just wanted to change this back, we just want to go back to where we were oops, not that far. So we have two seconds on, two seconds off. Save that, build the file, and now to upload it, I just need to get back to the uh, boot ROM mode. So reset, boot select, release reset, release boot select. There we go. And now I can copy and 
there it is. So that's just a, a easier way than yanking the USB cable over and over again. Uh, comes in very handy. And that's it.